I'm here today to tell you a story. This is a true story, and I know it's true, because I lived it and I breathed it for every day of my life for 10 years. But I don't think it started back 10 years ago. It really started when I was in the sixth grade at North Beach Elementary School in Miami, and I won a United States savings bond for writing the best essay on what democracy means to me. And I think that was the first manifestation of my lifelong passion for improving the operation of government. So the story that I'm going to tell you is one of very ugly backroom deals, political greed, and political entitlement. But it's also a story of citizens coming together to pull back the curtain on that kind of behavior. In the last 50 years, there had been many attempts to solve this problem. And I had been involved in some of those later attempts. And when the last effort failed, I said to myself, I've got to get involved. Maybe I can make a difference. And so I dove in head first. Suddenly, 10 years had passed. And in those 10 years, I found that I had been involved in a political battle with the establishment in Tallahassee and in Washington. But also in those 10 years, Florida had become a model for other states, and we now had a real chance to have real representative democracy in our state. The major problem had been solved. So, what was the problem? The problem was gerrymandering. It's been happening for centuries in our state and in our country. You know, every 10 years after the census, legislatures all around the country redraw district lines, supposedly doing that for the purpose of accommodating shifts in population. But in reality, what they're doing is they're rigging districts to perpetuate their own power and that of certain incumbents who they favor. Politicians go to unthinkable lengths, I learned, to grab power and then to hold on to it. They're actually choosing their own voters rather than giving us, the voters, the opportunity to select representatives of our choice. So this used to be legal in our state, and as we're speaking, the United States Supreme Court is considering whether to make it illegal in other states as well. So how did they used to do it? Legislators draw district lines. They pack large numbers of opposition voters into about a third of the districts, and then they spread their favorable voters into the other two-thirds, with all with safe majorities. Thus, they're securing a perpetual supermajority in our 50-50 state. The impact on Florida was tremendous. Cities and counties were split. Look at Winter Park, Florida, a town of eight square miles, 24,000 population. They had four different members of Congress representing them. And then the districts were also very bizarrely shaped. Some of you will recognize that there was a district that started in Jacksonville and made its way all the way down to Orlando. Sometimes it wasn't wider than a highway. And then there was a Senate district in southern Florida that went from coast to coast, from Palm Beach to Fort Myers, connected by a thin strip that just went through the bottom of Lake Okeechobee. Districts like this should have been compact and community-based, but they were drawn to create a predetermined electoral outcome on Election Day. But the worst impact was that when districts are rigged to be sure wins for one party or the other, 
There are rarely challenges from across the aisle. Representatives are elected in their primaries, and they have no motivation whatsoever to come to the center and find solutions for the common good. So there was only one possible solution to this problem. We had to have strict rules to limit the legislature when they draw those district lines, but we knew politicians would never establish such rules and limit themselves. So the citizens had to take matters into our own hands. We had to amend the Florida Constitution. To say that this is a daunting task is a gross understatement. It's a very arduous process. First, you have to draft language. And the Supreme Court of Florida has very strict legal rules for how the language has to be drafted. So we assembled a team of expert lawyers from all over the state, and that team worked for over a year and a half to get the language just right. But we also had to make sure that our language was clear and understandable to the voters. And so we conducted some polling, and we conducted some focus groups. And with the results of that research, we refined the language even further. And finally, we were eligible for Supreme Court review. And wouldn't you know it, the Florida legislature showed up in court to oppose our amendments being on the ballot. Finally, three years after starting this project, the Supreme Court of Florida approved our language, and we were cleared to go on to the next step. Well, the next step was a tough one. We had to gather 1.6 million verifiable signatures each signature on a separate piece of paper. Do you have any idea how much paper that is? <laughs> Once we had the signatures, we ran a full-blown media and voter contact campaign. We included TV, radio, direct mail, door-to-door -door communications, social media. But one of the keys to our success was that we had the support at every step along the way of this project of every single newspaper in the state of Florida. So who was we? We were the Fair District's coalition. Our coalition was made up of dozens of nonpartisan organizations, literally thousands of people, all of whom felt really passionately about the need to bring real representative democracy to Florida. And I had the privilege of leading this coalition. So once our amendments were on the ballot, the legislature clearly demonstrated that they had no intention of allowing citizens to tell them what to do. First thing they did was they appeared in court to try and have our amendments removed from the ballot. Then they held official legislative meetings with no purpose other than to bring in speakers to discredit our amendments. And then they voted on what we called a poison pill amendment to put that on the ballot in order to try and trick the Florida voters when, in fact, if that amendment had passed, it would have eviscerated the meaning of the Fair District's amendments. We had to retain lawyers, go to court, explain how this was misleading, and thankfully, the courts agreed and removed the legislature's amendment from the ballot. When all these other efforts of the legislature had failed, the legislators and their political cronies, they went out and they raised four and a half million dollars to run an ad campaign against our amendments. So, I guess you're all on pins and needles. <laughs> what happened? On November 2nd, 2010, the Fair District's amendments prevailed, democracy prevailed, and we won with 63% of the vote. <laughs> Florida now has a constitutional framework 
for fair redistricting. Not the end of the story. While we were celebrating on election night, our opponents were busy getting ready to file a middle-of-the-night lawsuit in federal court to try and have the new constitutional language held unconstitutional under the federal constitution. Well, we eventually won that lawsuit, but this started a whole new phase of our quest. Our amendments were in the Constitution, but now we had to go to court to defend them and make sure they were properly implemented. Meanwhile, back in Tallahassee, those entrenched politicians were determined to continue rigging districts even if it meant violating the Constitution. They held a clandestine meeting just a month after the election. They brought in legislative leaders, legislative staff. They brought in partisan lawyers and partisan political operatives, not only from Tallahassee, but also from Washington, D.C., to develop an elaborate scheme they wanted to appear to be following the Fair District's amendments, but really, they had full intention of drawing maps in back rooms and passing them, and so that their maps would continue to favor their party and certain incumbents. As one court said, they were conspiring to make a mockery of the Fair District's amendments. So they held 26 public hearings all around the state, and they announced at each hearing, we are going to have the most open and transparent and interactive redistricting process ever in the United States of America. But at the same time, the very time that those words were coming out of their mouths, in back rooms, there were paid partisan map drawers again, in Tallahassee and Washington, drawing maps to retain their supermajority dominance in our 50-50 state. And once they had those illicit maps drawn, they had to figure out a way to slip them into the legislature. And so they developed a scheme to submit the maps under phony names to try and make it look like random members of the public had drawn those maps rather than who really drew them, the paid political operatives. Those final 2012 maps were as gerrymandered and biased as any that had ever been passed in Florida before. And this led to three and a half more years of scorched earth litigation. Now, we knew that those maps were terribly gerrymandered. But in order to have those maps set aside, we had to prove that in court. So to hide their actions, the legislature actually destroyed all of their internal redistricting documents and communications. Of course, that made it very hard for us to prove our case. But amazingly, one of the conspirators came forward with the truth and opened the door for us to be able to prove our case. So after scores of depositions, after dozens of hearings, and weeks of trial with eight major decisions from the Florida Supreme Court, the courts ruled that the congressional map had been drawn illegally. And then another amazing thing happened. The Florida Senate, in court, confessed that it, too, had drawn its map illegally and that it had violated the Constitution. So the courts ordered the legislators to, redraw, to go back into special session to redraw their maps. And the legislators did that, but they couldn't agree on constitutional maps. 
And that left it to the courts to select from maps that were submitted by the various parties. In the end, the courts found that the maps submitted by the Fair District's coalition best complied and should be used in 2016 and beyond. This was a complete and total victory for the citizens of Florida. We now have districts in our state that are compact and community-based and not drawn to favor any political party or politician. So all we were trying to do was to make democracy work better in our state. And yet, we had this very vicious opposition. The Florida legislature, all its public resources, and all its cronies. But this time, the people prevailed over politics. But now you've heard about the lengths that some politicians will go to to preserve their ill-gotten power, and to try and fool us, the people of Florida. I urge every one of you to remain vigilant and to get involved and never, ever again allow elected officials to put their interests ahead of our democracy. Thank you.